The year was 1965, the height of Indonesia's confrontation. And it was here, at McDonald House along Orchard Road, that a bomb exploded. One that was placed by Indonesian saboteurs. It was a powerful explosion, ripping the bank and sending lethal shards of glass flying in all directions. Three people were killed, scores others injured. It was an experience many would never forget. Like Mr. Yo Swan Kim, who happened to be walking outside the building during those fateful seconds. Before the bomb at McDonald House, there had already been 29 other explosions. In their security sweeps across the island, the police had uncovered much material for the making of explosives. They were also on the lookout for Indonesian infiltrators and had in fact arrested quite a few. But of course, many also got away. Vernon Palmer, a former broadcaster, remembers one particular day when he was on duty at the TV station. I was told that <clears throat> the police had arrived and uh, they wanted to see me. They were looking out for a suspicious character. However, they, they soon burst into the room uh, and with their Sten guns, I thought they were the Indonesian invaders, so I nearly put my hand up you know, to surrender to them. Um, but they came in and they said, we want to pick up, meaning I want to, we want to arrest the man who's singing on television now. So that the monitor was on and I said, which man do you want? And they said, there was a chap singing, la young, la young, da dee, da dee, da dee. Became my favorite song after that. And um, they wanted to pick up that man because he was the ringleader of the saboteurs. And um, so I said, I'm sorry, you've come a bit late because the, that was a, that, this program has been recorded and uh, he's well away. They didn't believe me. So I took them down to the studio and uh, showed them the empty studio. And um, a worry, a thought occurred to us all at the time. If this guy had entered the studio legitimately as an artist, he could very well have planted a, a booby trap bomb in the building. So we had to make a thorough search of the building to, to look for any brown paper parcel or any paper parcel that was left around. But we never did find any, but we were always worried that there might have been a parcel left behind. These saboteurs had been sent by Indonesian President Sukarno, who had declared confrontation against the Federation of Malaysia, which Singapore belonged to at the time. One of the reasons for doing so was that Sukarno's hold on power was weakening. He needed to distract Indonesians from domestic problems and to get them to rally around him. Confrontation was his solution. It was a time where one could never be sure where the danger lurked. To minimize that, the Singapore Vigilante Corps was mobilized. Orang tak tahu. Mereka yang dia datang kita dalam guard security guard pun tak tahu dia siapa. Macam orang jalan jual plastik, t-shirt jalan. Tapi dia dalam bikin kerja pula ni. Pada saya lah, tak ada rasa takut lah. Pasal kita ada kita punya, our force all, equipment all semua bagus. Apa takut dia suruh jaga, mas naik dekat itu tank, sekarang sudah tak ada. Itu gas jeep tank, tank ke up, saya jaga naik atas sampai. Sama rebel, tapi rebel dulu, Max 5, alah, leceh lah. Although it happened a long time ago, Haji Jaffa believes there are lessons to be learned. Kali ini mungkin mereka ambil kesempatan sebab gamen Singapura sudah berjaga begitu betul. Jadi dia, 
Ha, sudahlah, gamen ada. Serahkan kepada gamen. Tak macam kita, kita rakyat semua, kita bertanggungjawab bersama-sama. So, do we, especially the young, understand that we must continue to hold together? Are we aware that the peace we've worked so hard to achieve can still be upset? In 1998, Malaysia was reeling from the severe Asian economic crisis. In August, the Malaysian Prime Minister criticized Singapore over various issues, drawing shouts of potong from the crowd, a reference to cutting water supply to Singapore. Malaysian leaders have long known that cutting water is tantamount to declaring hostilities. Sedangkan kita membekal air kepada mereka. In that same year, Singapore's relations with Indonesia were also unsettled. The former president, B.J. Habibi, made it known that he believed that Singapore had not done enough to assist Indonesia, referring to us as a tiny red dot. He also remarked, inaccurately, about discrimination of Malay Singaporeans in the SAF. One could only guess at his intentions. Indonesia at that time was also hard hit by the economic crisis, and Mr. Habibi was anxious to stamp his dominance, something which he failed to do. You know, there might be an Sakano in the next 10 years. I mean, you, if, if the present president, Abdurrahman, should, should uh, go down, you never know who might be the next one. On the surface, I should say there's nothing much to worry about. But underneath it, it, it just needs someone to uh, stir up the communities and bring up these sensitive issues of race and religion. It may happen again. We must not let anyone inside Singapore or outside Singapore to stir up these issues again. And we must always be vigilant against the people because we are vulnerable. Do we want to repeat the experience? Certainly not. Do you think we've worked all these years to build Islam to let it be destroyed by somebody? No, of course not.